Good morning, a very warm welcome to our worship from St Mary's Beverly. As we gather to hear and to engage with Jesus' vision, his vision for his ministry, for his life, and indeed the vision which we too join in as Christians today. And so I'm going to hand over to Ted for our opening prayer. Dear Lord, we gather in your presence, side by side, hand in hand, just as we are. All are welcome here. We come when you, we feel weak and when we feel strong. We come when we are sad and when we are joyful. Help us to be your body in this place, to bring good news of Jesus to all we know. Amen. And so we come to our words of confession. Lord God, we hear today of Jesus' vision, of the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord anointing us to share good news, to preach to the poor, to deliver the captives, to proclaim freedom. And so often, as we aspire to those things, other distractions get in the way. We struggle to bring about your kingdom in our own lives and our own community. Lord, give us a heart for your good news. For the poor. For those who are lonely. And for all who need to hear your words of freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, brothers, I want you to understand about the spiritual gifts. You remember the lives you lived before you were believers. You let yourselves be influenced and led away to worship idols, things that have no life. So I tell you... 
that no one who is speaking with the help of God's Spirit says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but they are all from the same Spirit. There are different ways to serve, but all these ways are from the same Lord. And there are different ways that God works in people, but all these ways are from the same God. God works in us all in everything we do. Something from the Spirit can be seen in each person to help everyone. Spirit gives one person the ability to speak with wisdom, and the same Spirit gives another the ability to speak with knowledge. The same Spirit gives faith to one person, and that one Spirit gives another gift of healing. The Spirit gives to another person the power to do miracles, to another the ability to prophesy, and he gives to another the ability to know the difference between good and evil spirits. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak in different kinds of languages and to another the ability to interpret those languages. One Spirit, the same Spirit, does all these things. The Spirit decides what to give each person, the body of Christ. The reading is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 12 to 31. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that we think are less honourable we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. Jesus went back to Galilee with the power of the Holy Spirit. Stories about Jesus spread all through the area. He began to teach in the synagogues and all the people praised him. Jesus traveled to Nazareth where he had grown up. On the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue as he always did. Je Jesus stood to read. The book of Isaiah, the prophet, was given to him. He opened the book and found the place where this is written. The spirit of the Lord is in me. Just because God chose me, Tell the good news to the poor. God sent me to tell the prisoners of sin, 
that they are free, and to tell the blind that they can see again. God sent me, sent me to free those who have been treated unfairly, and to announce the time when God, Lord, the Lord will show kindness to his people. Jesus closed the book, gave it back, and sat down. Everyone in the synagogue was watching Jesus closely. He began to speak to them. He said, while you have heard these words just now, they were coming true. All the people praised Jesus. They were amazed at the beautiful words he spoke. They asked, isn't this Joseph's son? Three. Let us pray. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What's the best sermon you've ever heard? Perhaps it was one that brought you to faith in serving Jesus Christ. Perhaps special comfort in a time of sorrow or guidance at a time of indecision. You may remember the one at Prince Harry's wedding about love. Or one that brought you back to God. And which may have helped you to see the glory of his sovereign grace. But could I be so bold as to say that no one has ever preached a better sermon than the first sermon Jesus preached in his place of birth, Nazareth. To hear him preach and to preach about himself. Now just for a moment, close your eyes. Can you picture that scene? Many people present, their anticipation, their trepidation, and their excitement all at once. It brought people to saving faith, gave them hope in their troubles and helped them to see the glory of God, the Son of God. Yes, that's what Jesus did in that synagogue in Nazareth that day. He preached the gospel according to Jesus, the good news of salvation in Christ. And we see here Jesus preaching in the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. And Luke tells us that Jesus had returned from the wilderness to Galilee. And that return was in the power of the Spirit, where he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all. Of course, the power of the Spirit is accessible to all who come to God in faith. But Jesus possessed it in a unique way, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, baptised by the Holy Spirit, who descended on him you will recall, in the form of a dove. And he went to face the devil, full of Holy Spirit. The Spirit remained on him through his public ministry, empowering his every word and deed, connected to the Father and the Spirit with the, with the triune of God. Just like you and me, through our faith, our custom is maintained in a regular pattern of worship. Listening to God's word, we say our prayers, we listen to sermons, we sing hymns and psalms. And that is exactly what Jesus did when he visited the many synagogues around Galilee. I make the obvious point that if worship was good enough for Jesus, our Saviour, then it must be good for us too. Our worship here at St Mary's is a foundation for any life that glorifies God. The book of Hebrews reminds us, let us not give up meeting together. So it is part of Jesus' vision that through the spiritual power of his preaching, he awakened people's minds and their hearts to glorify him. In that synagogue that day, those in attendance 
began to praise his preaching and glorify him. They may not fully have understood who he was, but they began to do the very thing for which they were made, to glorify God in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ. Wow, what a picture that scene brings. Jesus' vision is that this is the way that everyone who hears his voice should respond. Do we embrace those words? Is that how we respond? Does what we hear Jesus say thrill our soul wherever and whenever we hear it? Do we give glory to God in the way Jesus encouraged those to do in that synagogue? Perhaps we may just reflect those thoughts in the coming days as we think about how we glorify God through our worship. Jesus, as a young boy and a man, will have attended the synagogue on the Sabbath on many occasions and stood up and read. Here we hear the scroll of Isaiah was given to him. He was the returning, I suppose, celebrity at that time of the town. And it was natural that he should be asked to preach. And he knew he wanted to draw out from Isaiah's prophecy the words we shall see in a moment, showing he was familiar with the Old Testament scripture. What Isaiah had prophesied in was a jubilee, a reference to an ancient custom, and according to the law of God, a special celebration in Israel every 50 years. And that is what Isaiah meant when he said, the year of the Lord's favour. It was a year of amnesty, where slaves were freed from servitude. People were given redemption from debt, and lost belongings were restored. What Isaiah prophesied was a jubilee to end all jubilees. He spoke of the day, that great day of salvation, about the Messiah, the Anointed One, Jesus Christ. And when those godly people of faith heard Isaiah's prophecy, it gave them hope that one day God would come and save his people. So Jesus was reminding them of his vision. Once Jesus had finished reading from the scroll, he sat down and he gave it back to the attendant. But we know that the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed upon him. Like those people of Nazareth, we too must look at this profound spiritual lesson that occurred that day, Jesus' vision, and look to Jesus and listen to his words. He said, today this scripture, that is Isaiah, has been fulfilled in your hearing. What does that mean? Well, put simply, Jesus was announcing the fulfilment of Isaiah's prophecy. The Anointed One, the Messiah, Christ had come. The suffering servant had arrived, bringing salvation, proclaiming the good news to the poor, liberty to the captives, recovering the sight of the blind, setting at liberty those who are oppressed. So with him came his vision, a vision containing all of those things that Isaiah had promised that would come on the day God and spiritual deliverance arrived from the power of sin leading through faith 
to eternal life. Let us recommit ourselves to that vision, proclaim the gospel and care for people in need, love our neighbours. We believe in the gospel according to Jesus Christ and it's because of that commitment we too are committed to the poor, the oppressed and the disabled. We believe in that vision which begins with the proclamation of the good news. Let us not cross the road or look the other way. Through that belief today, God is calling on you and he's calling on me through our faith to help others who have the same desperate needs. Jesus is telling us that through our love for him, to listen to his vision and give that help that proclaims to all those in need through the good news and not to walk across the road in the other direction. So this sermon is, of Jesus is and will always be the best sermon you will ever, ever hear. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, we long for you to move in power. There's a hunger deep within our hearts to see healing in our nation. Send your spirit to revive us. Spirit coming closer, a mighty way to break upon our land, bringing justice and forgiveness. God, we cry to you. Let's pray. 
God of heaven and earth, we kneel in adoration before the majesty of Jesus, who came to live with us as one of us. We join with one another in praise as your family of believers, separate and unique, yet one in Christ. We praise you for the freedom that we sometimes take for granted. Lord, the freedom to serve you every day of our lives. When we fail to exercise it, show us new opportunities to be your hands, your feet, your eyes and your heart in this world. To do your will, to see things as you do and to share your love. We praise you that in serving we stand alongside our sisters and brothers in Christ. In a ministry stretching down the generations from Jesus himself. We rejoice in our diversity and the gifts that each person in this fellowship brings to the body of Christ. And we thank you for the faithful who have gone before us and supported us. Gracious Lord, make us truly one in Christ. We pray for the varied members in your worldwide church. Strengthen the faith and prayers of those suffering persecution and let them know they are not forgotten. Strengthen the faith and prayers of those in inner city parishes full of poverty and crime. And let them know that they are not forgotten because when one is need, we are in need. We are all in need. Gracious Lord, make us truly one in Christ. We pray for those who have authority for our nation and the global family. Guide them to make wise decisions, keeping the good of all as their priority. We pray for endurance for those working for peace and that the lovers of violence may be thwarted in all their doings. May your will for the earth and its people be done, because when one suffers, we all suffer. Gracious Lord, make us truly one in Christ. We pray for those who seek your healing in our community and thank you for the work of our medical and social services, church ministers and emergency services. We remember our police force, armed forces and those in education. We pray for those who keep our communities running and value before you, our shop workers, delivery drivers, council workers and all voluntary organisations. Give physical and mental and emotional refreshment to these and all the hardworking members of our community and let them know they are not forgotten. Gracious Lord, make us truly one in Christ. Almighty God, we thank you that you have designed your world in such a way that we all need each other. Help us through your spirit to encourage and carry one another, to laugh and weep together and to keep our eyes on Jesus as we seek to pass on the baton of faith. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our news and notices. The first thing to say is that please do look carefully on our website or sign up to our e-news for all the latest information. This Tuesday, if you're available, pop into church because you'll be able to see the carvings of the three women of influence who haven't yet been attached to the side of the building. We're very much looking forward to welcoming Rosalind Franklin and Bishop Libby Lane and Mary Wollstonecraft. So if you have time and you're able, do pop in and take a look before they go high up onto the side of church. 
Also, we're preparing for some lovely uh, family and community events. We're hoping to host a fabulous pancake party on the Saturday before Shrove Tuesday. Please do sign up for it. Information is on the notice sheet as well. And it's PCC, our church council meeting this Tuesday evening. So if there is anything you'd like to know about, about the runnings of the church, please do speak to somebody who's on our church council or speak to me. Also, we're very much looking forward to relaunching Women's Fellowship this year, but it isn't in January, it'll be in February. So once again, do take note of that. And you might not know, but on a Thursday morning after the service, which is at 10 o'clock, there's a lovely time to gather for tea and coffee and, and crafts in the hall. Also on Friday morning is our baby and toddler group, really lovely, warm, friendly, welcoming group. So please do let people know about the things that are happening in church. So we come to the end of our service. We are called to be Christ's body, to stand together side by side, to proclaim the good news of God's love, to bring mercy, peace and justice to our world. And so may the Spirit enable us in our day-to-day -day living, and may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen.